If you are interested in astrophotography, you've probably heard of a program called PixInsight. It's the gold standard of astronomical image processing, and a lot of us amateur astronomers use it for processing our images. Now, a while ago, I had um, reviewed a program called Blur Exterminator, which is uh, it's, it's, it's a plugin used in PixInsight for compensating for aberrations in our images or correcting the shapes of stars. Uh, so you can find that video on my channel over here titled Blur Exterminator for Astrophotography. And I had a lot of positive things to say about the program at the time. Uh, but there were a couple of deficiencies that I was hoping would get addressed in a future update. And today, uh, Russ Croman, the creator of the program, released AI version 4 for Blur Exterminator. And on his website here, you can see some of the things that have been updated in this program. So I wanted to try it out on my own images and see what kind of results we can get. And I can give you an update of real world uh, tests for this program now. So, um, as you can see, my version of uh, Blur Exterminator has been updated to AI version 4. I was previously using this one here, which is AI version 2. And the initial results that I have seen have been absolutely dramatic. So, um, <clears throat> one other thing that I, that I did was uh, switch over my uh, PixInsight installation to use GPU acceleration. And this makes processes such as Blur Exterminator and Noise Exterminator much, much faster. I mean, the difference is night and day. And this is something I had attempted once before, but uh, I'd run into some issues, so I'd given up on it at the time. And since I have a very powerful CPU, I didn't particularly need to use GPU acceleration. Uh, but I've put a link in the description of this video below uh, for how you can enable GPU acceleration for PixInsight. And I found that uh, this link here on RC Astro's website by Russ Croman is by far the best guide for enabling GPU acceleration uh, in PixInsight. And this is much, much easier than anything else that I have found online. So you can try this out. Basically, to give you a rundown, you need to, if, if you have a GPU made by NVIDIA and a fairly recent one, you can download the NVIDIA CUDA kit from the page link over here and uh, you'll select Windows x86 underscore x64 if you're using Windows. You will download and install the CUD uh, NN files uh, and the Zlib compression library and download and install the GPU enabled TensorFlow library and just double check these variables in Windows. This, this step is optional, you don't have to do this, but this is just to make sure that everything is there. And that's basically it. Once you've done all of that, just uh, restart your computer and you are good to go. If you run into any trouble on any of these steps, uh, just post a comment in under the video and I can guide you through it. It was very, very easy to follow, much easier to follow than anything else that I had tried uh, previously uh, in terms of enabling GPU acceleration. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's go over to PixInsight. Now, this is my PixInsight installation. And I uh, have a couple of images over here that we are going to take a look at. The first one here is Messier 45. Now, the reason I like this image is that this was taken with a uh, GT71 uh, refractor from William Optics. It's a nice triplet refractor, but the unit that I had was experiencing a couple of issues. For example, if you look at the stars in the corners, they were not not very sharp, they were a little bit blobby. Same with the top right corner. So uh, this is a good image to try. Uh, now I had made sure that, that the back focus requirements were exact, uh, but there were some collimation issues with this scope. So that made it a good scope uh, to experiment on. So now I've zoomed in to 100% on this single frame. And as you can see, the stars in the center are pretty sharp. Stars at the top left corner look kind of blobby and out of focus. Uh, same with the bottom left corner. Same with the bottom right corner, although not as bad. And the top right corner, a little bit better, but still some issues there with stars looking out of focus. I used the script 
uh, under image analysis called Aberration Inspector. And I generated this corner map. So you can see the stars in the center and all of the corners at the same time. And this is a very useful tool for analyzing your images if you're trying to collimate your telescope, for example. So as you can see here, center looks good. All four corners have some aberrations at various degrees. Um, so I'm uh, when I applied uh, blur exterminator in this case, what I did was I did not want to sharpen the image. I only wanted to apply corrections to the star shapes. So I selected correct only and dragged and dropped this on. And uh, to give you an idea of how fast this works, even on a fairly large image taken by a full frame Canon 6D, I'm just going to apply it right in front of you. So drag and drop. And uh, keep an eye on that, it's initializing. Yep, 25%, 50%. And 100% done. Without GPU acceleration, this would have probably taken me about five minutes. So you can see how much of a difference it makes. So I will undo that. Now looking at the uncorrected image, let's make that full size. And uh, this here is the corrected image. Now I'm going to go back and forth between them, but just right away you can see how good the stars look in all four corners as well as the center. And I've not done any sharpening in this case. I've only applied correction in Blur Exterminator. And this is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, doing deconvolution the way I used to do it back in the day manually was a painstaking process that took forever and the results were nowhere near as good. Now, anybody wondering whether deconvolution is considered cheating? I can assure you it is not. It is a rigorous scientific process. Basically, the underlying um, thought behind the process is that we know that all stars are point sources. There is no amateur telescope on Earth uh, that can resolve a star into an actual disk where you might see a blobby kind of shape. Uh, the only telescopes that can do something like that on the largest stars would be the Hubble, the James Webb Space Telescope, and some scopes like the VLT. But outside of that, all telescopes see stars as tiny little point sources. So if in an image you're seeing some aberrations in the corners, for example, the stars look like seagulls instead of point sources, you can be sure that that is because of aberrations uh, in the telescope's optics or because of improper tracking. So you can scientifically model that, that star shape and you can deconvolve that seagull shape or whatever the aberration is into a point source. And you can apply the same model to anything around the star, such as a nebula, and that will allow you to recover the original detail. Basically undo the aberration that's either caused by the scope optics or bad tracking. So it is rigorously, uh, you know, uh, it, it is a rigorous scientific process. So this is not considered cheating in that regard. But looking at how good the results are, I mean, yeah, it feels like cheating. Uh, there is no way it should be this easy. So I'm going to go back and forth between the original image and the corrected image. So this is the original. You can see all four corners have some aberrations. This is the corrected image. So even in the center, it definitely improves the full width half maximum. And the corners, the image, the difference is night and day. And this is without any sort of sharpening. This is simply correction being applied. So let's take a look at a stacked image. I will uh, minimize these again. So. A little while ago, I had taken this image when I was camping and I never ended up fully processing this image or sharing the results because I wasn't happy with it. And the reason I was not happy with it was because if you look at the very corners, the top right corner is fine. The bottom right corner is okay as well. Bottom left corner, some aberrations didn't look quite, the stars didn't look as round as I would have liked in top left corner. Also, they were, there was, it looked a bit like trailing, but in this case, my scope's collimation had been thrown off by traveling all the way to that dark site. So the stars were not as round as I would have liked in mainly in the top left corner. So I used the aberration, um, the script over here, Aberration Inspector under image analysis to generate a 
an image of all the corners here. So as you can see, they are okay, but not as nice as I would like, especially the top left corner, uh, or actually, sorry, this this one here. So, so yeah, the corners looked fine, but uh, top left corner didn't look perfect. Bottom left corner was actually a bit worse. You can see the stars look a bit like, um, like uh, I guess, rectangles. Same with the bottom left corner, not perfect, looked a tiny bit like a seagull, and that was due to collimation issues, which I have since fixed, so my stars are perfect in all corners now, uh, but after that long drive to the dark side, they were not looking great. So I applied a blur exterminator, just correction to it, and here is what it looks like now. You can see all four corners are looking good, center is looking very good as well, so I'll blink back and forth but before after before after before after now take a look at the bottom left corner especially before after before after that is a huge difference just beautiful beautiful difference and the best thing about this program is that <clears throat> this program is that it applies correction where it is required so it the correction applied varies depending on the part of the image and where correction is needed. It doesn't apply a one-size-fits-all solution to the entire image the way you know some of the previous attempts at deconvolution did or the way manually applying deconvolution would. So this is uh, a huge difference. Now let's take a look at a new color image. So this was another image I had taken when I went over to the dark site. I was very excited about this image. But when I got home, I had realized uh, there were there were some some problems with this image. Um, now let me take a look here. This was the initial state of the image. Now it still looks quite good. This was without any processing. This is right after it was stacked. But if I look at the very corners of this image. So you can see center looks good, top right corner, mm, the stars don't look perfect, bottom, bottom right is okay, bottom left is fairly okay, top left is okay. So main issue was the stars in the top right corner did not look perfect to me, they're slightly oval, and that might not be a big deal, it still looks like a good image, but again, I'm very picky, and I was using Hyperstar at F2 on my C11 Edge, so it's very, very hard to collimate perfectly at F2. Now let's see what Blur Exterminator can do in this case with just the correction option. Now top left corner looks pretty good, bottom left pretty good, bottom right pretty good, top right pretty good. It's not perfect, slightly oval here still, but it's a much, much bigger improvement than I had expected initially. So let's switch back and forth original image new image let's look at the center the stars in the center were slightly oval initially now pretty much perfectly round so that definitely made a difference and looking at the detail in the nebula right over here that has definitely been corrected a little bit as well it looks sharper now looking at the top right corner which was the main culprit originally after before after you can see the image looks quite a bit sharper even the detail within the nebula so just yeah massive improvement all around um, the stars are looking better all around and if we look at the actual image itself i'll zoom into a region with with some nebular detail this one over here for example this is the original after before, after. So the nebula definitely looks a bit better as well, but I haven't applied any actual sharpening uh, to that, only correction, so we're not seeing a big difference there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the correction here, and we're going to apply Blur Exterminator with the default settings. I will leave the PSF adjustment as uh, automatic. That should do a decent job. Sharpen Stars is at the default of 0.5 and Sharpen Non-Stellar is at the default of 0.5 as well. 
Uh, so let's see, this should not take very long thanks to the GPU acceleration. This that, that also is a game changer for me. I used to spend so much time waiting for Blur Exterminator to do its job. Now take a look at that. I'm going to undo and redo. So this is the original. This is the corrected. Original, corrected. Just looking at the detail in the nebula itself, it's amazing how much detail it was able to recover. And the stars, of course, look a lot better. My original stars looked a bit bloated, in large part due to terrible wind that I was dealing with at the time, but also uh, due to uh, just some issues with collimation at the time. So again, this has made a huge difference. Let's find some nebula in the near the corners and see <clears throat> how that was affected. So down here, that's a good place to test. Original, after. So the nebula definitely looks sharper. There has been good improvement, but the stars in particular, they have been improved immeasurably. This is, this is what deconvolution was meant to be. This is deconvolution being used at its full potential. And, you know, of course, uh, this video is not sponsored at all or anything like that. I'm just a fan of the products and uh, I have no, no, uh, personal interest in this at all but just the fact that this will allow us to, uh, to to really take our imaging image processing to the next level uh, that makes me very happy now the correction here is a bit too strong at the default level for me uh, so personally I think sharpen stars is good down at 0 0.2 I like to apply the minimum amount of processing required to get a decent image so I will undo that and actually maybe about 0.15 would be good. Um, what, what you can also do is just create a preview somewhere and then apply the corrections to that preview to make it go faster, especially if you're not using uh, this CUDA acceleration because it'll take a long time. But as you can see, this took very little time. So let's try before and after. Now this is the uh, preview undo and redo you want to use you don't want to go back because that'll cancel your preview so before after before after yep that's much better that that's a subtle touch I don't like to over sharpen things at all so for sharpen stars 0 0.15 in this case is the correct setting so now I can apply that to the entire image I will close the preview as I don't need it Apply that to the entire image. Shouldn't take more than maybe 30 seconds. And we are at 75%, 95, 100. Okay, let's take a look at this image now. Yep, center of course looks excellent. Look at the corners, also excellent. You can see before and after at the top right corner, before and after very very good improvement and same with all of the other corners so here we are so that is blur exterminator in a nutshell out of all of the programs uh, that are part of uh, of this series from rcs astro uh, the one i recommend the most is blur exterminator and then number two for me personally is noise exterminator those are the only two i'm using right now uh, there's a whole host of programs they offer but uh, i like to save my money wherever i can and put it to the best use i can so these are the two i would recommend to anyone looking at getting uh, some of those programs because i find that uh, for example starnet does a pretty good job as is but that's it if you've tried out the program uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it and what your experience has been and um, yeah if you run into any issues let me know I also just noticed a couple of background galaxies, actually a ton of background galaxies in this image. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, well, thanks for watching and clear skies.